Welcome to the lecture on environmental microbiology. In the earlier lectures, I tried to impress upon you that, the, that all microorganisms are very diverse in nature. So because of their diversity, we basically find microbes everywhere on Earth. They have the ability to adapt to different environments found on Earth. We can find them in areas where the conditions are very extreme to the more moderate or, temp or temperate conditions. Scientists believe that the majority of microbes still have yet to be discovered. The reason that they believe this is that we've solely depended on the ability to culture microorganisms, that is to grow them in the laboratory settings. However, if we do not understand their metabolic needs, their environmental needs, that we still are not able to grow them. Therefore, just because we don't see them does not mean that they exist. This became apparent as new genomic techniques have been improved. We were able to then isolate and identify DNA from different organisms. Thus, while, <clears throat> while we're waiting to be able to culture these organisms, we still can identify them due to the presence of their, of their genomes that we isolate from various um, regions. The, big, the best examples are the fact that we found some microbial genomes deep in the Earth's core, as well as deep in the glaciers. So these are very extreme conditions, very, very hot versus very, very cold. As we learn more about these organisms based on their, their genomes, as we understand what, what genes are encoded in their genomes, hopefully someday we'll learn how to, how to grow them and to identify them or characterize them further. The topic of this lecture series deals more on how these microbes actually interact with their environment and how they impact their environment. Basically, if we were to wipe the Earth uh, from all its living microorganisms, life on Earth would cease to exist. That means that you and I would not be here. Therefore, it is worth to, to visit how these microorganisms actually impact our lives. As we study microbes more and more, we start to find out that these organisms have a big impact on the biotic and abiotic factors found on the Earth's environment. So what are these? Let's define what a biotic factor means. So any biotic factor is anything that's living or dead organisms. So we know that microorganisms have a very big impact on our lives. Let's compare this to abi abiotic factors. These are the non-living components found on, on Earth's biosphere. I'll come back to the biotic factors when I talk more about normal flora that's found in our body versus pathogenic organisms and see how they impact our lives. But indirectly, they do impact our lives by interacting with the non-living components found on Earth's biosphere because we're all here together and we all share these components. So just to give you a brief list of what these components are, they are the atmospheric gases, the minerals that are found in the Earth, the water that's present, we're all going to use water, the temperature, they affect the temperature in the Earth's atmosphere, as well as the light. The light's very important for producers of organic matter. So we're going to show you today, or I'm going to show you today, how these organisms interact with the abiotic factors. First, it's important to say that this Earth is considered as a biosphere and is essentially a closed system. So that means that all the elements that are present within the Earth's biosphere cannot be destroyed or will not be created. So the elements that we've had three, three, four and a half billion years ago are the same elements in the Earth's atmosphere that we have today. Some of these elements are more essential than others. And today we're going to talk about the following. We're going to talk about carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. We've already talked about oxygen, and this will come apparent today in the lecture kind of indirectly. What I want you to appreciate in today's lecture is that microorganisms play a very important role 
in recycling these elements. These cycles are very important because organisms can only take up elements in a certain nature, in a certain format. As an example, nitrogen gas. We need nitrogen to be incorporated inside our amino acids as well as inside our nucleotides. However, we cannot take nitrogen gas directly and use that element or those, those atoms and put them directly into our amino acids. We're going to need microorganisms that are going to convert nitrogen gas into ammonia, into nitrites, nitrates, and then other organisms place the uh, nitrogen inside amino acids, in which then we take over, we take these amino acids. So we're all dependent on each other, and these microorganisms are going to have a very important way of, of recycling these elements. They're going to do this through the biological, that is through different organisms, through the geological, that is min through minerals, and through chemical mechanisms. They're going to make and break bonds, covalent bonds. We're going to call these cycles the biogeochemical cycles. So this is going to include the three mechanisms. So as the term implies, biogeochemicals, these elements are going to be cycled between abiotic and the biotic environments. So some of these elements are going to be found in the atmosphere. Some of them will be found in the rocks and minerals. These are going to be the abiotic, the non-living components. You're going to see that these microorganisms are going to recycle these, these chemicals or these elements from living organisms or dead organisms, whichever is the case. That's going to be the biotic factors or the biotic environments. These cycling or recycling um, events are very important to help maintain a general balance of these nutrients within the biosphere. Now, if they didn't do this, these elements would actually build up in, in, in more in the abiotic or the biotic factor, and it would be considered a dead end. So we need to, to remove them so that they can cycle between these two environments. It's very important so that the whole source is not depleted. Now during the semester I also, also tried to uh, impress upon you that there are certain microorganisms that we consider as being producers of organic matter. You have some that are considered consumers, so they're going to require the uptake of organic matter to make more of their their um, cellular components. And then you're going to have those that are considered as decomposers. So again, remember, when we talk about organic matter, we generally talk about molecules that contain carbon in them. So the producers, they're going to be the organisms or the microorganisms that produce organic molecules. They're going to take small carbon molecules, the inorganic ones, such as carbon dioxide, and convert them into larger organic molecules. So by definition, they're considered as autotrophs. Autotrophs meaning that they're going to convert carbon dioxide into organic molecules. The majority of these organisms are going to use sunlight as a source of energy to make ATP so that they can covalently bind these carbon dioxide molecules together to make carbohydrates. So we're going to say the majority of them are photosynthetic or photoautotrophs. There are some microorganisms that actually use inorganic molecules to, to break apart their covalent bonds to extract the energy to make ATP. So then again, they can use this energy to take carbon dioxide molecules and make organic molecules. We're going to call these chemoautotrophs. Overall, as I mentioned, they all convert carbon dioxide into larger organic molecules. We're going to compare that to the consumers, which by definition are the heterotrophs. These group of organisms are going to take the organic molecules made by the producers and break them down to either extract their energy in the form of ATP or to make other organic molecules. Again, these can be broken down as photoheterotrophs or chemoheterotrophs. The photoheterotrophs need to make ATP using, uh, by using the sunlight as a source of energy to break down these organic molecules. We are chemo chemoheterotrophs because we can take 
large organic molecules such as carbohydrates, such as glucose, and break it down to extract energy, as well as using glucose to make our amino acids and our nucleotides. All in all, the consumers or the, the heterotrophs are going to release carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere that's going to be used by the producers, the autotrophs. To the right, I'm showing you a what we call a trophic pyramid trophic being T-R-O-P-H-I-C. We're showing you at the bottom base, or the base of the pyramid, are the producers. So this is where the autotrophs are found. So you will find the plants, the algae, and certain bacteria that are considered producers. They're going to form the base of this pyramid. They're going to be the producers of all the organic molecules found in the Earth's biosphere. So they're going to take the carbon dioxide, convert them into organic molecules. Then we have the herbivores. These are the first step of consumers. These consumers are going to eat the plants, eat the algae, eat the bacteria, and use the organic molecules that were made by the producers. In turn, these herbivores are eaten by carnivores, the second layer of, producer, of consumers. They're going to acquire the organic molecules that were produced by the herbivores. And then we usually have a carnivore uh, at the peak, which is a third row of consumers. So you can see the food chain. Now what we have to the left of this pyramid is a smaller pyramid. These are the decomposers. We're going to consider the decomposers also as heterotrophs, but their job is to help release organic molecules back into, into the atmosphere. So they're going to help release the organic matter back into inorganic molecules and while they undergo their metabolism, they too, just like the consumers, will release the carbon dioxide back into their atmosphere. Now the point that I'd like to also stress here, since this is microbiology, is that microorganisms are the only living organisms that will exist in all of these three major trophic levels, the producers, consumers, and decomposers. Now the construction of this tropic pyramid uh, tells you that, that, these, that the carbon molecules, since carbon is the basis of organic matter, uh, will be recycled between the producers and the consumers. And the fact that microorganisms are found in these three trophic levels are an, an attestment of the power that these microorganisms have at maintaining a certain cycle of carbon. So let's discuss carbon and its importance in nature.